Hey guys, so welcome to my podcast, Emerging World Order. And in today's podcast, we are going to talk about BRICS Summit. And I have some really, really good information and some actually surprising information. By the end of this whole thing, I think you'll be surprised and you will, you guys will realize that things are not as easy as they seem okay so without much ado let's get started right because there's a lot to cover today and then we're gonna work on day two day three like that hmm? so let's get started let me first share my screen and all right all right guys, so let's talk about that so first of all as you can see the title here that an emerging world order right so why i'm saying this title as emerging world order see after here's my my take on this whole break summit okay that after the summit is over i think that we will see certain new developments in the current world order that will act that this is going to be the beginning of the new world order let's just say that okay and why i'm saying this thing i'm going to explain everything in this podcast okay so just stay with me, stay with me till the end and like and subscribe. Some of you, I, I see lots of people who watch the video, but they don't subscribe, you know. It's free, guys. Yeah. So let's go. Now, BRICS, Russia is not isolated. Now, this is, you see this this picture right here? This is the beginning of the emerging world order. You see this? What do you see? President Xi, Prime Minister Modi, and President Putin. Do you see any kind of strain on their faces? Any kind of uh, some sort of anger or some sort of, you know, hostility towards each other or any hesitation? No. This is why I said that this is going to be, this is going to change the whole thing. Why? Because... President Xi and Prime Minister Modi are going to meet. They are going to have a bilateral talk, right? And so here's the thing. The way I'm seeing it is that the BRICS will evolve as India-China relationship evolves, okay? Because Russia will be the neutral party in there. But these two, as their relationship evolves, their issue resolution and all that, right? That's how BRICS is going to further evolve, one step at a time. Because right before the BRICS, they announced that, yeah, let's settle down, let's talk. We're going to fall back where we were before 2020 and rest, we're going to sort it out. And that's the beginning. All right, because see, why is that this a beginning? Because China also needs a face save. Everybody needs that thing, right? And I'm pretty sure that President Xi also wants to uh, get out of the situation and move on to something else and to work on its baby, BRI. And without India, that's not going to happen. Right? So, the India and China, they both need each other. And I think they both know it at this point. So that's why I was saying that, that BRICS is going to evolve as China and India relationship evolves. There's a lot more to come in, in this thing. But so, so, so let's see. We'll keep an eye out for all this stuff, okay? So I'm going to keep making these videos and, and do the analysis and everything. I will study all that and I'll let you guys know. But here, this is like a very powerful picture, actually. All right. 
and it says it represents a lot right here is the new world order that we are seeing okay the 45 percent of the total population the the high the the highest gdp by purchasing power parity and is going to be the grouping with the highest nominal gdp as well all this in one frame right here okay and and anybody who doubts the military military cap capabilities of BRICS, i've already made a video about it okay and i'm just going to give you a, a nutshell brief uh like how do i say it brief uh, description of it right so right now the military age military age personnel in BRICS versus nato the differential is eight is to one okay eight is to one meaning the BRICS has eight times more eight times more military age population than than nato all right so when 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 we talk about all this hardware right so you may have hardware that's fine just as a hypothetical thing but you need somebody to actually drive that thing or use it if you don't have anybody to use it then how are you going to even even make any impact without it right so that's the whole that's the whole point eight is to one and this is why at this point like nato is already subdued okay so forget about it nato nato can't even handle russia alone so i'm just i'm i'm saying all these things i'm telling you all these things just to tell you the importance of this picture right here this is a very very powerful picture all right and so you know how like lots of g7 folks you see lots of g7 members they um take the picture when they do the photo session and all that so in, in between in the middle there is the united states and then other folks are on the side regardless of what who is the host regardless of who is hosting the us is in the middle the rest of them <laughs> are on the side okay but this is this is a different game here it says a lot it says that there is a equality there is a equilibrium there is a understanding and there is a purpose so let's keep moving forward all right now bricks reloaded the non-western alliance expands so when uh First thing first is the BRICS expands with new members, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and UAE. As I have told this guy, to you guys in my previous videos as well, that it, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and UAE, they have joined BRICS, okay? Positioning as a counterbalance to Western blocs. See, even though uh, BRICS, never, BRICS was never created with this thing in mind, okay? And... Uh, uh, and I will prove it to you because uh, in one of these uh, interviews, Dr. S. J. Shankar was asked, "Hey, you have G20, you have all these things. So why why breaks?" Basically, the uh, basically the the reporter was trying to say that, "Hey, we created G20 for you. Then why do you need breaks?" What he's he, so his answer was very simple. He said that you have G7, you don't want to expand G7. So that's why we created our own block bricks and that's the point point is that you just you don't dictate these things to us that uh you belong to g20 and we are a separate elite group g7 regardless of your gdp regardless of your military capabilities regardless of what it is regardless of your economy and everything but somehow you want to call yourself elite group and put others into g20 like that so so that's what the whole thing was but the goal was never to actually counterbalance g7 or g20 and so i will explain you why is that see when we talk about counterbalancing something 
then we are talking about uh doing something in parallel to what what already exists and making it better or what not and but i i don't i don't really think the bricks has that in mind okay i don't think bricks is fun, gonna function this way bricks for bricks g7 doesn't exist for bricks g20 doesn't exist and it's not gonna exist pretty soon because after what happened in indonesia indonesia summit when you know half of the g20 members basically the western countries they they left and uh, still rest of the countries were there and so th these type of activities actually create problems and then uh, then last year it happened in india and it became g21 but can canada was trying to uh, do some crap in there in, in g20 something i don't want to discuss because that's not part of uh, the the world order discussion the whole you know the scope of this channel is right that's something that canada india spat that's going on you can read about it somewhere else but at the end of the day uh, canada's whole entire goal all along has been to justify the terrorism and then support it why because it belongs into its country and it's going to help them or help at least justin trudeau as a vote bank and this is what and this is the problem see this is why I, i've been saying that radicalized radicalization of west and de-radicalization of the west asia or whatever other regions are there but at this point, the radicalization of West has begun. And this is what's going to happen. Why? Because the population is less. Okay. So if, it's, if something doesn't hurt the system, the Western system, so they think that it's fine for them. As long as it's fine for them, it doesn't matter whether it is terrorism or whether it is robbery, whether it is murder. Doesn't matter what it is as long as it fits their bill is justified and that's the kind of system i think uh, that's the kind of thing actually actually created bricks in the first place the whole hypocrisy of things that there is that uh, there's a one standard for somebody else and the other standard for somebody else anyway so prime minister modi and President Putin, they, all, they have already said that this is not a anti-Western alliance. It's a non-Western alliance. And this is what I've been trying to explain all along. That non-Western, when you say non-Western, it simply means that what Western alliances do, G20, G7, what they do, it is totally irrelevant for BRICS. BRICS is only going to do things what works for them. Just because lots of things, parallel things they are creating and more so they are creating is because up until now they were in the old world order. Now when you want to transition into the new world order, you have to create things that you already know first, right? As a base, as a foundation, just in a better way. And then after that, there is a new direction that you take. Right now, what's the problem is problem is the dollar. For everyone in the BRICS countries, at least, the problem is dollar. Regardless of a country is sanctioned or not. The countries that are not sanctioned, they don't have access to the dollar. Why? Because they don't have enough uh, exports to have dollar in their foreign exchange. Then there are countries like Ukraine that they keep getting free dollar but reality of that is also it's it's just a corruption it's just corruption ukraine is corrupt and the deep state here is also corrupt that's the bottom line okay and once again that's it that's totally different politics all right that's a totally different politics and that's something yeah that's not the scope of this thing so i'm not gonna go into that now so that so so far that BRICS is a non-western alliance which means what a Western alliance does, 
BRICS has nothing to do with it. It's totally irrelevant for BRICS. All right. Now, other thing is the shared goals, economic cooperation in global governance reforms, reducing reliance on US dollar, like as I mentioned right now, right? So that's that's the definition of the BRICS as far as what kind of alliance it is, or if it is, it is anti-West or not. And sometimes, you know, see, sometimes, uh, not just sometimes, for, for the most part, actually, if you look at it, the lots of experts when they talk about it they definitely say this thing that oh BRICS is BRICS is going to replace this and replace that <clears throat> i have said it myself but uh, as our understanding of this thing evolves you will start to realize that why those things are there and why it may seem like it that uh, that BRICS is going to replace this, 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 but they're not going to replace those things or that system like financial infrastructure, BRICS parliament or university rating credit system, BRICS clear, all those things, right? All this system is there. Why? Because they're going to replace it so that they can use it. It has nothing to do with uh, any, it, it's not some sort of ill intention to harm West or whatnot. But the reality is that when they will have their own system, own the own grouping, then um, an uh, own financial structure, own credit ratings, own business structure, something that is like World Trade Organization, there will be other bodies like World Health Organization that's going to be discussed in this meeting. Hmm? So, so that's what the that's what it is. It's not going to re, it's going to replace, but it's going to replace so that BRICS can use it, and not with the intention that we are going to harm any other body. Meaning that BRICS members will continue to use WTO and all that slowly and slowly. But once their system, once BRICS BRICS system evolves and is fully functional and streamlined, then they won't even have the need to use UN. Hmm? So, you see what I'm saying? It's a fine line, actually. It's a fine line. All right. Now, let's go with the day one highlight and all that. I'm going to go through all this. Um, there's not much explanation needed here. There are some interesting moments. So, day one highlight. So, President Putin and Prime Minister Modi, they met. They had a... Uh, some interesting talk and interesting conversations. Then there was focus on key BRICS decisions. Putin em emphasized the need for critical decisions, signaling the importance of BRICS' growing global role. Then there is one thing that's going to come out after the summit is Kazan Declaration. The summit is expected to adopt this key document outlining future BRICS cooperation on global multipolarity, trade, and cultural exchange. Meaning that Kazan Declaration will be something that folks will have to sign as a full member and uh, as a partnership or associate partners or conditional membership, whatever that is you will have to abide by the Kazan Declaration. And the Kazan Declaration, I believe, is something that's going to continue to evolve as more members join and as BRICS evolves. Okay. Now, Prime Minister Modi's schedule, he's going to meet President Xi tomorrow. And they both haven't met uh, since 2020, actually. Then there will be there was BRICS expansion and multipolarity. Focus on adaption of Kazan Declaration, like I said, to outline future cooperation, emphasizing global money, economic growth, all that. So that's that. Now let's move to the next one. What is Kazan Declaration? See, the Kazan Declaration is expected to focus on several key points related to BRICS cooperation. Okay. First thing is the global multipolarity. Second is economic cooperation. Third is cultural and technological exchange and development agenda. Now, the all this will be in the document, right? Meaning that, 
See, multipolarity, we already talked about it, how we are going to do. When we talk about multipolarity, meaning that we are going to discuss, there will be trade in national currencies. Number one thing. Economic cooperation-wise, every country probably that that's going to join simple thing is if you want to if you are joining BRICS, then the commitment is that you are going to trade in national currencies and do whatever right so that's why i see including reducing dependence on us dollar through local currency mode okay currency trade now cultural and technological exchange now uh they're gonna do a, a, a block is actually really developed and is tightly knit when there are cultural exchanges and then there are technological exchanges. Clearly, when they're going to do all that, then they're going to discuss the intellectual property, intellectual property, how that's going to be managed. So don't be surprised if down the line, not right now, but down the line as things evolve, right, over the period of time. So down the line, if you see BRICS, uh, some patent office or something like that, or BRICS's own copyright thing, a body that's going to manage the intellectual property in any form, okay? Because, see, the reason is that right now, if you follow the patent office and all that, the problem with the, that is that, uh, that that information gets stolen, Okay, behind the scenes, that information gets stolen. So uh, Uncle Sam actually keeps the technology and uh, while telling others not to do so. And that's also another stealing that's, that has been going on for a long time now. So then we have uh, addressing issues like sustainable development, climate change, infrastructure, development agenda. These things will be in the Kazan Declaration. Now, now, what to expect on day two? There will be number one thing, the most important thing is the key bilateral talk. Modi and Z, President Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping will actually talk. They will have a bilateral talk about India-China relationships. And like I said, see, I have said this before and I'm saying it again, that BRICS will evolve as India-China relationship evolves. And that's the bottom line. So, and as India-China relationship evolves, and when it's in full flow, and in an India-China relationship after that, you know, they all converge to one point. Hmm? That's when you will see the real strength of BRICS. Okay? And why I'm talking about strength right now, the real strength of BRICS, a real purpose of BRICS, because there are things that are going, that are coming in next few slides. That's when I'll, I'll tell you why I'm talking about this thing. Okay, but at the end of the day, the, these core members, I'm not see, I'm not undermining any other member like Egypt, Ethiopia, or South Africa, or anyone. But considering that these three are the major great powers here, so, so. So for them being together and to converge on things is very important. And uh, this is a good start. All right. This is a good start. So let's see. Let's see. Let's just play it by the ear. But but chances are that there will be positive things that are going to come out of this. And especially we'll find out like uh, later uh, on in this month. As to when President Xi he reaches China and Prime Minister Modi reaches India, everybody is in their own country, and then what, what kind of statement statement statements they make, right? That's the interesting part because because what happens is that sometimes they meet to the face, ah, you're great, you're great, and then the moment they are in their own zone, ah, that guy, man, I'm telling you, that guy is pain in the rear. All that, you know, so so real thing comes out. So that's why I'm saying, right? so we'll have to wait and watch. But my, I'm thinking that based on my calculations, based on my calculations, they're going to resolve the dispute. Their border dispute and all that is going to be gone. And I think that India and China are going to work on BRI. 
and all the their projects will be together it's needed all right that's on the day two and then adoption of kazan declaration like i said kazan the kazan declaration was introduced now they're going to talk they're going to talk about adopting it meaning that everyone has to sign signature then strategic economic agreements more specific measures related to intra brics trade financial autonomy and de-dollarization may be announced de-dollarization may be announced meaning that i'm thinking that brics pay will be there on day two. all right now why uh, what is the significance of this whole brics summit for russia why why does it matter really and why this is something that uh, actually if any other country had it done like for example when brics summit happened in last year in johannesburg south africa right then nobody actually said a word about it. oh okay people when they blah 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 all that happened but for some reason western media didn't cover it but this time since it's happening in russia so they're all covering it why is that see simple thing is that after russia ukraine war west especially uncle sam's the whole idea of uncle sam was to isolate russia okay and they tried to isolate russia but uh, once again keyword here is tried like applied sanctions and all those things good stuff they tried their best let's just say that okay well what happened is that instead of all that what we are seeing is that 30 plus countries ha- are attending the BRICS summit and e- even in today's date even in today's date, i was doing this calculation one day i was like okay let's see how many countries with how many countries russia is trading in ruble actually and when i started to calculate it it turned out that it's like almost 25 to 30 countries are out there with whom russia is trading in its national currency same thing with india india also trades with almost like 30 countries 25 to 30 countries in its national currency so the whole purpose of the the primary thing about this whole brics summit is that putin is not isolated president putin or russians are not isolated and they just showed it to everyone the key members are all there key members nine members are there and we cannot count saudi arabia because saudis never accepted the offer okay saudis never formally accepted the offer now saudis still have time you know january 1st next year right january 1st is the is the real membership acceptance time and that's when the new members actually start so so saudis still have time and 5th 5th november is the election day here right so after that whomever becomes the president i think based on that saudis are going to decide if they should join brics or not okay now putin's president putin's focus building alliances with the global south it's not just the global south actually there is a global south and then there is a global east and president putin that's what they, he said so according to them global south leader of global south is india and global east is like russia and china basically they are considering themselves as the leader of global east like mainly like asean countries and all that and then you have uh some other countries that are there in that region basically now <clears throat> like so it's 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 just how you how you basically divide the sphere right earth like you cut it in the half like that so east on the east side the countries that are on the east side they call it global east and on this side they call it, if you cut it in north and south like slice it then south becomes the global south like that hmm? so <clears throat> 
so 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 russia is actually not isolated and instead now they have they had in this summit in this summit they came up with this new term global south and then global east so which means that like i have, I have said before that the whole entire <laughs> entire eastern hemisphere will be covered and controlled by the BRICS countries. That's how they are playing it. It's that simple. Next battle will be in Arctic, and then as Antarctic ice melts or something happens, the chances are that there will be two. But that's a different story, though. Hmm? So, so they so with global south and global east, they're covering the Arctic as well. Okay, that's why this was said. Now, <clears throat> uh, and with with this BRICS platform, Russia gets to show that hey, I'm not alone. We are not alone, and uh, Russia has partners and really powerful partners. The first picture that I showed you, that's the symbol. That's what. Putin wanted to show the whole world that you think you are powerful, but that's not the case anymore. Okay. That's why I was showing you that first picture. Because that's this is one of the reasons. All right. Now, war criminal Putin, or is it? Because this is see, this is the beauty of abusing your own system. Right. This is the beauty of it that create international code of justice, but actually do inter but it is actually international code of injustice. Test thousand nuclear weapons and then blame somebody who hasn't even tested the nuclear weapon that they have the nuclear weapon and then then grab them and then kill them and then steal their gold and all that and then put your puppet there and then take the oil. Why? Because the guy wanted to just do the trade in its own currency or in euro. But ICJ never said anything about it. In fact, ICJ tried to say that George Bush actually um, scoffed at it. George Bush, on record, he laughed. He said, ah, we don't give a shit about ICJ. We don't recognize ICJ. That's what he said. So, so this is what that's why I'm saying that this is why emerging world order, a world order that doesn't care about ICJ anymore. There was a time it cared. Why I'm saying this? See, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres is also attending. <laughs> and Putin, Putin technically, technically, President Putin is a war criminal. And United Nations uh, Secretary General Secretary is attending, at, at, attending this Kazan summit. Think about it. So Ukraine's actually foreign affairs ministry basically they said that oh while he did not accept <laughs> he did not accept an invitation to attend Ukraine bag peace summit in Switzerland in June. <laughs> but he's going to meet the war criminal Putin <laughs> in, in Kazan. Hey, war Qatar is meeting uh, the war criminal Putin. <laughs> And we are we are going to we are voting for felon felon <laughs> felon as a f for president, you know. So it's interesting thing over there. So we we have a felon we are voting for. I voted for the felon actually, and probably we we may have it. <laughs> we may have that felon as president too. So I think it's gonna be a good camaraderie. All right. So. Putin skipped the G20 summit in India last year, even though New Delhi is not party party to the Rome statute. Okay, so uh, I think that President Putin didn't come to G20 because uh, I think he want he just wanted I think a G20 to be successful. That's all it was. It had nothing else in it because when you when you get there, then if they attend President Xi attends or something, then it's uh it has a different meaning and besides i think see every country in the BRICS, okay has a different intent has a different intent of why 
they need bricks or why they are in bricks and this is why i was saying that bricks will evolve and become rock solid only when these main countries they converge onto things meaning that that uh, that russia cannot use russia should not or the, when actually russia will stop thinking of bricks for its own purpose when china will stop thinking bricks uh, in its own terms and when india will stop stop thinking about bricks in its own terms and when they all three will think about bricks as a for a greater good the convergence point that's when bricks will evolve all right and that that's when actually there is something real will come out so things are headed towards that okay things are heading in that direction but let's see what happens hmm now why i have this slide here though war criminal putin now then prime minister modi has invited president putin in india in 2025 okay when he did the thing so there are this is very important stuff you have to understand it uh, when i'm saying this this is very important you have to understand this okay this is very important why is that see up until now there have been some things that were going on within india and the uh and the uncle you have bangladesh and all this politics was basically going on because of the canada row that happened between india and canada that spat and so us was basically with canada instead of you know doing the right thing and in fact us is also involved in it by supporting these terrorists and all that so <clears throat> now with this with when putin will be there next year then india is going to send a message that you can keep all this whatever you want to do we don't care about your decision about icj or what not either rule based order meaning that there should be rules rule makers cannot be the rule breakers and who gives you the authority to make the rules anyways so when you when these things are happening so this means that uh war criminal putin is not going to be a war criminal putin why because brics is a non western alliance just because you cannot just go create a body and say that hey it's icj and now somebody is a criminal right otherwise otherwise brics can create its own 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 court right away and then they start to <laughs> call all these western leaders a criminal all the time right and all the brics member can simply say that yeah if you come to our country we are going to arrest you don't be surprised if these type of things start to happen down the line but that's a very long time that's long progress we're talking about like 15 years 20 years from now but nothing at this time but this is a very simple thing that yeah icj means nothing to brics countries either okay now i have talked about this thing in detail before that modi and z a critical meeting amidst global shifts and like i said in the prime minister modi to meet shiji ping at brics summit that that's the meeting that's why the whole border issue was resolved and um, uh this is very crucial meeting because they are going to be meeting after then there i think key discussions probably will be india china border tensions regional stability and I don't know why I had this feeling this understanding and in me that uh there will be few more meetings chance it I don't be surprised if president xi invites prime minister modi to china don't be surprised if that happens or prime prime minister modi invites president xi to india don't be surprised i'm telling you don't be surprised at all and if president if if president xi or they both leaders they accept it that okay sure 
All right. So don't be surprised if that happens. And potential implication, simple thing is diplomatic thaw or continued rivalry. I, I don't really think that there was ever a rivalry, to be honest, simple thing. See, up until 2013, there was a government in India that was basically pro-China, so-called pro-China. Hmm? Now, when you have a bootlicking government and, and then all of a sudden you meet a, a government body that just does, just, that just wants to do what's good for their own country, then, then you try to like fight, flight and surrender, right? These are three stages how anything works, any kind of, uh, confrontation works first you try to fight then you there is a flight to look for a flight here and there and then surrender so at first china after that 2013 right after the, boot, the bootlicking government was gone the new government came the prime minister modi's government came then it was the after that china started what fight the response was fight and then in the fight, when they lost hundred, their 100 soldiers, then it was a flight response. What was the flight response? Flight response was basically that um, at the border, just uh, uh, put the forces on the border and have a standoff. And that's that. Ding. Then standoff is a flight. Why? Because you are in your in in the zone that you were supposed to be in. So you ran away. That's the flight. Now, what we are seeing right now is the first stage of surrender. This is like the stage right now that's between flight and surrender. The transition stage, meaning that they're going to come up with a plan where they can save the face. And politically, because they have to internally, they have to worry about the internal domestic politics too, right? So that's going to happen. And to do that, to do that, I think they're going to invite each other to visit the country on a state visit and whatnot. And to send out a message, this is going to do actually great. Why? This is another reason why I'm thinking that they're going to do this. Because with this invitation, they're sending a message to the West that, hey, don't think that India and China are going to fight or India and China are enemies. We are going to work together to resolve our issues and we are going to do business and make money. That message will be sent. Just watch. Now, Russia and Iran partners in multipolar world and Russia and Iran, they had to do that because of all the, all the storm that... Iran is facing right now with Israel and all the Hamas and Hezbollah and all that thing. But Iran has already tested the nuclear weapons. Iran has S-400. And, uh, and Russia and Iran basically uh, trade with each other in national currencies anyways. So there's nothing special or any such thing coming out of it but only thing that's coming out of it is that russians are going to protect iran regardless no matter what so if somebody if there will be any direct military conflict then russians are going to get involved and it's going to become a world war three so so chances are that it's not going to happen now the israelis will basically you know do a few things here and there they're gonna blow up few things and uh, and after that, after the election, with the new government and all that, I think things are going to calm down. Then BRICS bold move shaking up the global order. BRICS aims to reshape global financial systems, reduce reliance on US dollar. We talked about that. BRICS members exploring alternatives to Western financial institutes. BRICS pay will be there and the potential impact on global trade and political alliances. These things are going to come. We talked about it. Now, the important stuff, more important stuff, who isn't joining the BRICS summit and why? Actually, I was surprised with this. See, President Lula already told you why he's not coming. He had neck injury. Then Serbia's 
who, who checked to skip break summit serbia was uh, was going to join break summit they were planning to attend the break summit but uh, alexander vushik says he won't attend an annual break summit this week as the balkan country tries to balance its ties with russia with efforts to join the european union and to improve relations with us that's why that means that serbia mr president here he probably got the ultimatum from the deep state somehow the cia and all that they gave him some ultimatum and you know uh, we're going to topple a government or regime change so he's like oh, we're not doing it so that's what that is and the most important thing that i'm seeing is the miguel diaz canal of cuba the president is not attending because there is a serious energy problem in the country so that's why he's not attending and out of which lula and cuba actually was going to apply for the brics membership and uh, but uh, serbia serbia was just attending like that because serbia is one of the cis countries and all so that's also i mean serbians basically they directly said that because because of european union and all these they want to maintain good relationship and blah 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 so they just denied it that okay we are not coming and these are the challenges that i've been talking about guys see there will there is a lot of politics involved it's not as simple as you know getting the invitation accepting it and then attending the meeting so and to do for for that to happen actually brics block will have to evolve and i believe that once at least if at least uh brics pay brics pay is launched and it's 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 it starts to function smoothly meaning that all these core countries and members 9 10 members and few other mem partners they start to do the trade in national currency using brics pay and then brics clear is developed right all these when a when a proper financial infrastructure is established i think that's when we will start to see lots and lots of countries joining brics that's when it's going to happen okay the minimum requirement is the financial infrastructure who isn't joining the brics at all and why so there are a couple of countries that said that they're not going to join brics flat they said that baba we are not joining we don't know you we don't even want to know you so kazakh president kazakhstan is not joining brics they said that they are not even going to apply for brics membership um so kasim jamar tokeo declared immediately before kazan summit that his country would not be applying for brics membership in the foreseeable future due to the development prospects of this association meaning that they, they have doubts about it that of oh, if it's going to develop or not and they go and join it and then their relationship will be ruined with other countries so this is the thing i'm talking about that once these three major players in the brics they converge that's when we will start to see the real brics and and it's in works it's in works just watch after the summit things are going to come out his spokes his press spokesman added that in the national interest in the national interest kazakhstan gives priority to the un as the universal organization with no alternative in which all current international problems can and must be discussed so they so kazakhstan basically sees that brics is a, an alternative to un and if you guys remember when i made the video video about sri lanka right when i said that sri lanka is going to join too and when i read the 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 actual line from the letter the statement it said that they they want they uh, they assume they assume that brics is going to follow the un charter so so sri lanka basically said that hey we assume this thing if you are not then hey we are not part of that part activity but we are joining brics under the assumption that it follows the un charter and the same thing kazakhstan is saying too 
So Kazakhstan is afraid that BRICS may actually eventually be something that's against or in parallel to UN. And once again, this is this is because these countries they are not confident enough to join BRICS. That's all it is. Why? Because uh, they are not seeing much value add to ruin their relationship with the West. Hmm? Then we have Armenian President Nikol Pashinyan, who is attending the summit at Putin's invitation, also made it clear that his country is not seeking membership of BRICS. And yeah, we are going to attend, but we are not going to seek the BRICS membership. That's from Armenian president. Azerbaijan probably may attend. Azerbaijan may seek the membership. Let's see. Let's see. But, but I'm pretty sure that all these countries are going to come back. All right. Give it a few more years. They're all going to come back. Now, so what's the breakdown of the new world order dynamics here? Okay. The BRICS expansion and its geopolitical significance. Right now, yes, it's let's, all we can say is that its significance is growing, considering that UN General Secretary is going there. There are 30 plus countries that are attending. Yes, a couple of countries have simply said no to it. But that will always be the case. All right. That's going to be the case always. But these things are going to move forward slowly. But certainly, it's going to happen. Just ma watch it. It's going to happen. Next year, in next summit, it will be something else. Hmm? So then BRICS is simply, it doesn't even intend to challenge the Western dominance. But uh, but let's just say that uh, It's, um, but when a body is when a, when a body or an organization like BRICS is there, then regardless of what your intent is, it automatically challenges. All right, and yeah, we BRICS members may not say it verbally in their words. They may try to use pretty uh, passive tone for it, or passive tone, or more so like neutral tone. But the functioning of BRICS is very aggressive. And it's going to continue to get more and more aggressive as time goes by. De-dollarization, reducing dependence on the US dollar. That's the clear-cut intent. And that's a, not even intent countries are already doing it, right? So there is no intent here. India may be saying that yeah, we are not planning to de-dollarize, but you're buying oil from UAE in national currency. You're buying uh all from russia and other trade that you are doing in national currency and if relationship with china gets better then that's going to be in national currency mm. so a whole bunch of things are there they are already doing and by the way i forgot to mention that nigeria has started to sell its oil in national currency too they just announced it they said that they're not going to sell anything in dollar anymore. They're going to sell their thing in their own national currency. Isn't that interesting? Now, BRICS as an alternative to UN, only for BRICS countries. BRICS as an alternative to WTO. Yeah, options should be there for countries who don't have the voice. There should be a voice, right? And BRICS in decolonized world, the multipolar world order. Decolonization, I'm going to do a whole video, a separate video on it. I will explain this whole thing, how this decolonization and de-radicalization and all these things are going to, are changing and it's happening and how it is changing the whole dynamics of the geopolitics okay now 
what happened? Yeah, I think this is it, guys. So, BRICS in decolonized world. So, as see, slowly and slowly, as the, these countries, when I say this, what I mean is that that you know how certain countries like Serbia or Armenia, these countries are not joining in their national interest, right? What is national? And national interest is simply that mentally they are still colonized, right? They think that somehow they need the Western countries. They don't have the and they don't have enough courage to do what is good for them or what they want to do. I would say what they want to do rather than good or bad or whatnot. I didn't think because some it is not going to harm you, right? Or joining the BRICS is not going to harm you either. But why are you not joining? Why? Because you are mentally colonized. You still have that mindset that, yeah, this is where my whole thing is. So, slowly, and as these countries, they decolonize themselves one at a time. Eventually, they would want to think more in terms of their own well-being, their own uh, currency, their own commodities, their own uh, their own order of things. Mm? And that's when, when they would think in terms of their own order of things, then it will become a multipolar world order. Right now, yes, there are multiple poles, but they are, these poles are just not enough. The uh, main thing is the economic blocks. That's what you need. So the countries like like countries that are not gutsy enough to join BRICS right now, then I think they're what they're going to do is they will probably form their small block and then as a block as a whole, they're going to join BRICS. But eventually I think BRICS will become stronger only when mark my words what I'm saying here very carefully, only when Russia, China, and India they converge. And when they converge, that's when BRICS will evolve really, really fast. That's one thing. Second thing is that don't be surprised if you see some sort of invitation from India and China, Indians and Indian and Chinese leaders to for the state visit. So don't be surprised if that happens, all right? So... So that's what it was, guys, about all about the BRICS, what happened today and what we talked about, right? What happened today, then um, where BRICS is going and how it's not that easy the way, you know, lots of times folks make it look easier that just, yeah, tomorrow night, just be ready. Tomorrow night, the sky is going to fall. Your retirement money is going to be gone. You know, you're going to go bankrupt. All the wealth from the West will be gone somewhere. Dollar will be doomed. See, the reality of reality of this whole thing is that dollar will be doomed, not because BRICS intends to do that. No. Actually, BRICS is, ma- BRICS is the backup plan. The way I, that's how I'm looking at it is that BRICS is the backup plan. Why? Because... Right now, already there's $35 trillion of national debt. And when debt to GDP ratio is above 60%, as it is, the country is on the verge of bankruptcy. That's what it is. it may it means. But here it's, it's up more than 100%, 120% around that. So, and then um, you're in, in, in the current Joe Biden's budget, these people don't even care. They're just, uh, they keep spending the money. There are unnecessary departments that are open that have no purpose, actually. They just keep dumping money here and there. And at the end of the day, all that money is going to, is that it just gets laundered, you know? So technically, in, in, in nutshell, in nutshell, U.S. government itself has created channels to launder the money that they use for budgeting purposes. Meaning the U.S. government itself is laundering, laundering the money, and 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 because of which there is corruption, and that's why the national debt has gone up. Now, so I was watching this um, Senate hearing one day, and Janet Allen, she's like, 
yes so will 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 get this a uh, whole national debt she was asked, so how much do you with this budget how much national debt this uh thing is going to create this budget 51 trillion dollars debt will reach 51 trillion dollars in next 5 years you're talking about de-dollarization is going to harm how no de-dollarization is not going to harm these countries are de-dollarizing not because of all that they de- de-dollarizing because of america's and you know, uncle sam's economic policies uh, uncle sam's economic policy is there is no policy that's why that's why the these countries are de-dollarizing it's not because russia is getting sanctioned and all that that those are one of those reasons but when since when one country all these countries started to care about russian sanction or something yeah let's just say that lots of people will disagree so let's just say that yeah i'm i'm agreeing yeah that's fine you're right that maybe the russian russians have supporters but but the reality of this is that all these countries see india china and russia they're not dumb ass countries right they got smart people over there they understand those leaders you talk to putin talk to president putin you will he will tell you the whole entire thing from start to the finish of its country how the economy works how oh, what region of russia is gen- generating what percentage of gdp all those things he goes and talks to all these governors of its state and based on that he makes those economic policies he's on top of his game talk to prime minister modi you will learn the same thing president xi same thing so they understand that if they don't walk away from the dollar soon enough the way us policy is it will be hard to really deal with this burden now i want to tell you something very important today actually there was some comment that was made uh in one of my posts or what not i normally post as well on youtube posts i normally go and post and try to uh, subscribe to my x account up, up top right there and so i i make posts over there as well so here's the thing so based on the thing what i would i just wanted to talk about is that how do we know okay how do we know that you know supply and demand right supply and demand is what determines the value of a commodity hmm so that value of dollar or value of a currency is being affected by the supply and demand so here's the thing the answer to that question or let me if you if may if you find it a little bit hard to understand the question then let me make it simple let me rephrase it okay how do we see or determine the value of a currency in like in day to day life without any mathematical calculation if you are not a bank how a layman can actually tell that the value of a currency is going down or is going up that's the question see the answer to this question is that how how that money is utilized how that currency is utilized within your country and outside the country that's what determines the value of a currency for example if you have one apple and you you know that yes your life depends on that apple what would you do you will be very careful you will make sure that it doesn't go to waste so you're going to eat that apple and without wasting it but if you have loads and loads of apple and yeah you, you your life may depend on it but you may like take a bite oh i don't like it you may throw it but if your life depends on it if you had only one apple regardless of it was even even bitter in taste you are going to eat it why because your life depends on it and you have only one thing one apple right why i'm telling you this because 
same thing with the money when you have just the right amount of money then what governments tend to do is that they tend to invest that money so that it grows okay so that it grows or they'll put it in right places where it is exactly needed like go to india there is a budget session proper budget session within the parliament where finance budget is it's presented to the whole entire parliament why is that why because money is there but it's not enough to just yeah you want some you take this you want some you take this waste it right same thing with china same thing with russia that's how you know if the currency or 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 currency is valued or money is valued or not but with what's happening with dollar what's happening with dollar is that it's going all over the place everybody is just like okay people don't even lots of people don't even know about the investments lots of people don't even they just keep buying stuff even though it's not needed somebody gets a little bit of scratch in their shoes oh i don't like this is gone let's buy a new one so you start to see what you start to see the waste of commodities you start to see lots of waste you start to see uh people getting involved into things that are not even healthy for them meaning that you will start to see more and more obese people in the country why because they just keep eating they keep drinking all the crap that's not even good for their body but if they if people don't have extra money if they have just enough money what they will do they will drink water why it's free so now you see see how do you know that uh, that you have excess money in the market and it's not valued anymore this is how you know then crime goes up crime go- goes up your population people don't care about you know joint families people don't care about uh having relationships and all these things are interrelated and i will make videos about these things how they are all interrelated soon once brics is over then i will tell you how this whole entire thing works how the the population collapse is what determines the economic or geoeconomic shift why all of a sudden india is a rising star why china was a rising star and why china started to go downhill who is the next rising star after india right these things matter you have to look at it so so there are lots of theories about it like okay there is a uh, a some group or something some elites they decide how which can so they decided and they decide to just take the whole thing and move somewhere else and now it's india's turn and let's make india great again or something like that but no actually elites are there yes president trump has accepted that himself he said that i was part of that group just 6 months ago he said those things but elite do not control where the economy goes elite just simply go and invest where the population goes which population we are talking about the military age population the young population population that actually is meaningful that add some value in the society that's the population so why the western population basically has collapsed i will just give you a hint look at the 18th century 19th century 20th century what was it all war 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 
World War One, all that basically whatever wars happened in 18th century, they led to seven 19th century wars, and then eventually 19th century wars led to World War One, then World War Two, mm-hmm. then Vietnam War. Uh, Yom Kippur war, all kinds of war, Afghanistan war, then Iran, Iraq, all kinds of war that happened, right? All these wars, what was happening? Con- consistent war. What happens? Your young population goes to fight these wars. Young population that is gutsy to do something. That population goes to fight the war. Either they die or they get injured, they get maimed, whatever. But they are not normal human beings after that. They cannot contribute to the society in a positive way. That's why China's population collapsed. Why? Because of their China's one child policy for the time being china had two child policy china's economy was growing why because countries continued to invest there but as soon as china's one child policy happened china's economy started to go downhill and all the investors so called elites they were like okay this is not going to work for us china's policy is not helping us let's move to india Now you guys see how this whole thing shifts from one location to another like that. But it has nothing to do with like somebody's, there is some, or some, there are some powerful people and they're doing some sort of conspiracy theory or something. No, simple thing is that population collapse happens because of your own policies, the political thing. Okay. And uh, those policies basically lead to the problems. Nobody tells you to do so, but these things happen. And political elites, what politicians have to do? Politicians basically think about their own well-being. I will talk about that in my one of my podcasts pretty soon. I'm going to tell you some really, really shocking things. Hmm? So be prepared. All right, guys, I think that's it for now. And I will talk to you guys in another video, which will be about BRICS. As long as BRICS Summit goes, I'm going to continue to do this, okay? So I'll talk to you guys in the next video. And please like and subscribe, guys, all right? Please do like and subscribe. Thank you.